everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be doing a book haul. I looked at my videos recently and I realised I have not done a book haul since December last year. So this video could be very long but it's not going to be. I mean it is because I don't know what brevity is but it's not going to be as long as it could be considering I haven't done a book haul since December. I've just cherry picked a couple of books. Even when I was like I'm going to film this video I was like what books have I bought? Because I know I've purchased books, but it just feels like, what? Like, I've shown some books in, like, other videos and stuff like that, so if I have shown them in another video, like, I won't mention it here, or at least I'll just give it a mention and say what video it was in. But otherwise, yeah, I haven't come together and been like, these are all the books I've purchased. I'd be so intrigued to see at the end of the year how many books I have actually ended up purchasing, because I don't feel like it's a lot, um, but who knows. Uh, yeah, let's just jump into the video. I'm going to try and mix it up so it's not just books that I've purchased recently, but let's just start with, let's just start with two that I have purchased recently. Um, and the first one is this, whoopsie daisy, is this manga, which is my lesbian experience with loneliness. I picked this up for the Reading Around the World project um, for the month of August, I guess I keep getting this confused, for the month of August the country was Japan so I read this and another book which I will talk about later um, so yeah I picked up this is my first manga ever this is about our narrator the she illustrates this as well Nagata, Nagata Kabi and it's about when she was like 28 and her sort of I guess reckoning with her life but also her sexuality and what she does to sort of explore that it's a really interesting book actually and it's actually quite dark in the beginning but yeah that's essentially the premise of this and it's very nicely illustrated it's got all these tones of pink running through it and yeah it's actually just really cute but yeah so that was one of the books that i got for the reading around the world project like i said a book that i have also purchased recently you can't really see that properly is the body keeps the school mind brain and body in the transformation of trauma i feel like everyone has heard about this book if you haven't heard about this book this book is about trauma and how your body stores trauma um i think it's quite an academic piece but also not it's actually very readable but I think in the beginning it's quite academic I am already a good like halfway through this but I guess um, this is by Bessel van der Kolk essentially he is looking at um, research that him he has conducted research from the past on the topic of trauma on the topic of other mental illnesses and talking about the way that we treat them and he talks about the sort of like PTSD complex PTSD how sort of new diagnosis diagnoses um, get created and then I think the, the book is split into chapters essentially well sorry of course the book is split into chapters the book is split into parts and I think like parts one all the way to three you know to four are basically about the impact of trauma and just like different research and findings and stuff like that and then part five is about like sort of healing from your trauma so he's essentially talking about how your body like stores all this trauma so the final part is about like exercises to sort of relieve that trauma and like get in tune with your body so it's a pretty chunky book it is okay these are loads of um <clears throat> what's it called it references it's about 431 pages long so not too bad but again i feel like this is a book that everyone's read if you're into like that sort of healing spiritual vibes this is a book that so many people talk about because i think in it this is where he talks about a lot of somatic therapy and i think from this and edmr and i think this is like for a lot of people the first time that they hear about those things so then it's gone on to inform loads of different work but it's gone on to inform how people go about sort of seeking support for any issues that they're having the next week I'm going to speak about is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I actually managed to use my work discount for this. I rarely actually remember that I have it, but I was able to get this. And this book follows um, the characters Eva and Shane over seven days. They meet at a literary event and people notice that they have like sparks flying. But little do most people know that they had, well, little does anyone know actually, that they actually knew each other as teenagers and they spent like, I don't know how long they spent together, but they spent a certain amount of time together. It was a very dark time in both of their lives and it ended with well both of them are quite unsure of how and why it ended apart from Shane I suppose but not because any there was miscommunication but something happened to sort of sever their connection so over the next seven days in this book I find it amazing that the book is just like over seven days it doesn't really feel like that in a good way um over the next seven days they basically explore like what happened and they get to know each other again um but alongside this is sort of like either it is a she writes an erotica novel which is kind of like um 
Twilight meets Fifty Shades of Grey but with black vampires if I'm correct and Shane is he writes literary fiction so they both write in very two different genres um, and it's just a pretty cute romance I say cute it has some very dark elements to it and um, for me that made the story all the more interesting but I did find it was very it was very cute it was a nice romance of contemporary fiction novel but yeah this was one that again of course I have read Another one in the book haul was The New Me by Halle Butler. I've been wanting to read this for so long. This is basically like my year of rest and relaxation, but a very tamer version. It is about our main character, Millie, who is 31, an eternal temp, um, and when the possibility of a new permanent job arises, she sort of starts dreaming about what it would be like to, you know, have a routine, have a stable job, and all the things that come with that. But really, you're just following Millie around and finding out, like, that she's a lazy bum. Um, you know, rich, rich, Essentially, and this is very much rich middle class white girl problems, and like that's it. You follow her doing all these random things, and you're just like, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to read this for so long, and I think I mentioned this in one of the videos that I did talking about this. But it is on a Goodreads um, like reading list, which is like Women Be the Void, and it really is just like the perfect book for that. Another book that I picked up with my work discount is The Maidens by Alex McDailies. He is the author of The Silent Patient, and in this one we are following a professor in Oxford University? Is this Cambridge? Cambridge University, sorry. I just realised, I filmed a video about three weeks ago and I said that he wrote this book about Oxford. He didn't. <laughs> it's in Cambridge, to me, they're interchangeable, clearly. Um, <clears throat> but it's about, well it's about, it says, the Maidens, who are a secret group in um, Cambridge University. Really, if you've read the book, I don't think it's about them at all. It tries to have that intrigue of them, but it's not. Um, it's also about a character named Mariana, who is suddenly sort of drawn back to Cambridge. She used to go there because her niece is there, and basically people start dying at the campus and they're trying to find out who it is. And that is essentially the plot of the story. Of course, there's a little bit more to it, and I think it's very obvious from the back of the book that you're supposed to suspect the guy who's the leader of the Maidens, because it's all these beautiful women and he's the professor there and he's also the leader of this really beautiful group um but yeah that's essentially the premise of this book because i have read this i can say it is not as good as the silent patient but it is okay another book that piqued my interest that i wanted to pick up for a very long time and ended up picking up very much earlier this year when i went to ghana is such sweet country and this is about ghana it is set in ghana it is set in accra in the 1970s it says in the streets, marketplaces and crowded houses of this sprawling city, an unforgettable cast of characters live, love and try to get by. And then it lists the sort of different characters and then it says here, through their stories and those of the living, breathing city itself, Kojo dazzling novel creates a portrait of a place caught between colonialism and freedom, eternity and the present. I actually started reading this in Ghana and I have not picked it up since because I found it very hard to get into, but that is essentially what it was about and I just really wanted to read it because I was in Accra at the time so I thought it would just be really nice you know, like, I don't know what the word is, but you know, I feel very immersed in the city, that's what I'm looking for. Obviously this was set like, very much a long time ago, but I just thought it'd be good to see all the changes and stuff like that. Didn't get to read it, but I still at some point I definitely want to read it, because this is like one of the Penguin classics, modern classics, so I definitely want to get to it at some point. Another book that I hauled, I was so interested in, and like usually I don't really tend to get like brand new self-help books, especially if they're in hardback, because yeah, but anyway, this is Becoming the One by Shalina Ayana. Um, it says, heal your past, transform your relationship patterns and come home to yourself. And she is the founder of Rising Women on Instagram. And I think it's also like her course as well. That's the name of her website and all the courses that she does as well. And yeah, this is like one of those new age self-help books, but I think it's so much more than that. So lovely. She talks a lot on here about like sort of somatic therapy, your relationship to yourself, talking about your past, exploring your relationship patterns, like inner, inner child work, shadow work, all those sorts of things. So if you're interested in any of those things, this book could be very interesting to you. I would recommend going to her Instagram and just seeing if you like her sort of content because this is essentially very much a written down, deeper version of what she has on her Instagram and perhaps what she also has in her um, courses and stuff like that, but I haven't, purchased any or done any of her courses so I do not know. But yeah this book is about six chapters and 
there are some journal prompts in some of these like activities that you can go away and do but essentially yeah it's that sort of healing yourself vibe so if you're into that i would recommend picking this up i'm actually reading this at the end for the second time in like two months so that's how good i found it let's dive into some poetry collections that i picked up it's so funny because i'm doing this book haul and i basically read the majority of these books but poetry collection that i picked up randomly when i was in a bookshop that's very close to me it's called out with books um, it's called Stone Fruit by Rebecca Perry. It says here, Poetry Book Society recommendation. Has a whole long ass blurb on the back. Who is the, okay, so it's published by Blood Axe Books, who is also the publisher of the collection that I picked up from Imitaz Becker, I believe. This poetry collection, it says here, it's a collection of three distinct parts, the poems in Rebecca's Perry Stone Fruit, nonetheless speak across their many common preoccupations, memory, grief, and the fallibility of the physical form, our connection to and place in the world, natural and otherwise. I would say for me, because I have read it, the themes that I remember from this collection, and I think I ended up actually giving this like two stars, is a lot about like being a young girl, but there was a lot in there about like dancing or gymnastics. She did some sort of like sport like that. I really can't remember too much of what it is. And a lot of it is about nature and yeah, like I said, childhood. So if those things sound appealing to you, then this is a collection worth getting for you. One that I picked up very recently and I had in my Amazon basket for a really long time is Calling the Wolf a Wolf by Kaveh Akbar. He is an Iranian poet, or at least he was born in America, but he is Iranian in heritage and this is about like alcoholism, um, I'm going to say manhood, um, his sexuality, I don't know if there's anything else here, I'm missing addiction, um, and it says here wrestling with desire, inheritance and faith. Um, these are powerful intimate poems of thirst for alcohol, for other bodies, for knowledge and for life. This is a very interesting collection. Again, this is split into three parts. I'll say again, this is split into parts. Um, the first part is soot, the second is hunger, the third is irons. These are very much a... I would, some of these poems are absolutely dazzling. The imagery in them is stunning. And some of them, I just I have absolutely no idea what he's trying to convey. So it's a very mixed collection of poems, I would say. A lot of them do focus on his... Um, childhood in the sense of he's re remembering things from his childhood so like when his dad first taught him how to pray but certain foods um family life what it's like being an immigrant so again if those things are of interest to you this collection could be great it also talks about like it says here about like desire for other bodies so you know sleeping with other men and things like that not so much in the way that of like andrew mcmillan does in um physical i want to say um but again it has that sort of similar vibe to me so if you're interested in that this book might be a good collection for you Another poetry collection that I purchased is The Trees, Trees by Heather Christie. I'll be honest and say I do not know what this is about. Like, even the blur for it doesn't cover the themes in this book. And honestly, I didn't like it. I gave it one star, so it's very much erased from my mind. But I will read you the blurb. It says it's the follow-up to her acclaimed first collection, which is The Difficult Farm. And it says here, each line is a sharp turn towards joy and heartbreak. And each poem unfolds like a bat through wild, meaningless, through the through the wild meaningless, meaninglessness of the world. Wow. Um, yeah, this is not for me. And I always find sometimes the poetry collections, I find it very interesting. Sometimes, often, the blurb is like one of the best parts of the whole poetry collection. Like, they are blurred by people who are absolutely stunning with words. So I'm gonna end with two books now. Please don't fall. Great, I'm gonna end with this. Well, this and one other book. So this is All About Love by Bell Books. I don't even think I need to tell you guys what this is about. I feel like, again, this is one of those books that everyone knows what it's about. But this is about love, yeah? So it says here, the word love is, the most, often is most often defined as a noun. We would all love better if we used it as a verb, right? Bell Books as she comes out fighting and on fire in All About Love. Here, her most provocative and intensely personal, the renowned scholar, cultural critic, and feminist skewers our views of love as romance. In its place, she offers a pro proactive new ethic for, for a people and a society bereft of lovelessness. It's broken it down into chapters, and they're essentially Bell Hook's thoughts on each of these sections in love. So it's broken up into like sort of grace, touched by love, clarity, give love words, justice, childhood for love lessons, honesty, be true to you, spirituality, commitment, all these various different things. And honestly, they are just her thoughts, her musings on all of these topics. So yes, it will be interesting if you want to see other people's takes on love. Personally, because I've read one of her other collections, which is, I've completely, it's gone out of my head completely now. Ooh, this is gonna bug me. Ain't 
anti women, black women and feminism because I read that and that was so research heavy based and like still she was managed to get her own, own voice through I was expecting similar from this, it wasn't really the same but I feel like again yeah this book doesn't really need any introduction but if you are interested on a book that talks about love in its different forms and sort of hearing I guess from a cultural icon about it then I would recommend this to you except I wouldn't because I've not finished reading it I got to page 89 and put it down and this was back in like May so mm. finally let us end with the other book that I purchased for September not for September for August oh my god for the reading around the world project which was a murder in the crooked house by Shoji Shimada and it was translated by Louise E. Kawaii. I actually think this is the second book of his that has been translated that's in this sort of series and yeah let me read you what the blurb is. The Crooked House sits on a snowbound cliff at the remote northern tip of Japan, a curious place to build a house but even more curious is the house itself, a maze of sloping floors and strange staircases full of blood curdling masks and, and uncanny dolls. When a guest is found murdered in seemingly impossible circumstances the police are called but they are unable to solve the puzzle and more bizarre deaths follows. Enter Kiyoshi Matari, the renowned sleuth. Surely if anyone can crack these cryptic murders, it's him. But you all but you all have the clues too. Can you solve the mystery of the murders in the crooked house first? That's that book. I have to say also because I've read this, I didn't really get the vibe that I was supposed to solve it, but I know some people feel like reading mystery detective novels without trying to solve it yourself is a waste. I don't think that. Um, but yeah, this was very interesting in the sense that it's Japanese mystery and it's something I've never experienced before. So that was nice to experience, but if it sounds like something you might be interested in, I would definitely recommend giving it a little Google. And that is my random book haul of some of the books that I have picked up in the past nine months. Let me know if you have read any of these books, especially the books that I have picked up but not continue to re read. Let me know if you've picked them up and if you think they are worth me continuing on with. But thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in another one. Bye!